Okay. So, hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. Um, my name is Sebastian. I'm the Chief Software Architect at Wireworks and responsible for the development of our products. And in this webinar, we're going to hear more about what's new in our Wi Files releases in 2020. So, this is not going to be an introduction to Wi Files. If you're absolutely new to Wi Files, there's a lot more to learn. Uh, we won't be covering the, the basics and we won't be covering uh, the existing fu functionality, but we'll be looking at specifically those features um, that will be new in the releases this year. So, what is it uh, we get this year? Uh, uh, the year will start off with the newest version for Wi Files for HTML, the 2.3 version, and it's going to become available uh, later this quarter, probably uh, around uh, end of May, uh, beginning of June. Um, uh, the same features and functionality uh, will then be published and released uh, in the Windows Forms version, WiFiles.net, in the third quarter, just as well as the version for the Windows Presentation Foundation, WPF. And last but not least, uh, for our uh, Java users, Java on the desktop uh, in Q4, there will be the releases for WiFiles for JavaFX and WiFiles for Java Swing. Um, Indirectly related, uh, our free products, Y8, Y Life, and uh, our Graffiti for Confluence plugin uh, will also be uh, receiving uh, many of the new goodies uh, starting this quarter already. So you might come across some of the new features in those editors um, before uh, they come to your platform. So, what is it that we have in there? It's like in every release, we got many new improvements and new features that should be interesting for both existing customers uh, looking, trying to improve their existing applications or, or their layouts, their views, and also for uh, new people interested in Wi Files. Um, we, our teams have worked a lot in the past, uh, it's almost 14 months now, to uh, create and include new graph analysis algorithms into Wi Files. There's also, of course, a bunch of new layout options and algorithm options uh, included in the, in the library. And we also have uh, new interactivity features coming to Wi Files. And not just the interactivity, but of course, the visualization uh, has, has new options too. We help you with new ways to load your data quickly into Wi Files. And of course, as, as always, uh, we, we are looking to improve your productivity as a developer when working with Wi Files. And as usual, there's also, of course, new demos and improved and uh, new documentation too. These are just uh, the highlights in, that, in the release that we will be going through. And now let's take a quick look at them. We start off with the graph algorithms. Um, in this release, uh, we added a couple of new uh, centrality and clustering algorithms. For example, we added the popular page rank algorithm. Uh, we added uh, an algorithm to calculate the eigenvector centrality. Uh, simple algorithms like K-core component detections, but also more uh, sophisticated, maybe academic uh, clustering algorithms like the Louvain model modularity and label propagation clustering. But best of all, we actually uh, included an algorithm that will help you make use of these algorithms without actually knowing the academic background or having any academic background and knowing the details about this algorithm. So let's see a live demo about how these new um, algorithms can be used. So just switch to the browser. So this is the graph analysis demo uh, in a new version of Wi-Fi for HTML. And um, as you can see, we added some of the new algorithms um, to, to this uh, chooser up here. So let's take a look at K-Core components, for example. K-Core components helps us find strongly connected components in, inside a graph. And it can be calculated with wi of course. It's a very simple algorithm. But more sophisticated ones, like eigenvector centrality, um, also run right inside the browser uh, in Wi-Files and, 
uh, you can play with, with the demo to see how changing the graph and structure affects the eigenvector values. Also new, the page rank algorithm um, showing um, which item is especially uh, uh, interesting, the most, the most important item in a, in a network being linked to by other important items. It's the one that's uh, basically uh, said to be at the core of Google's uh, page uh, ranking algorithm. That's hence the name. We also um, added uh, simple um, algorithms that will help you to detect uh, simple structures inside your graphs, like chains or um, clicks, clicks, that is uh, groups of nodes which are all connected to each other or uh, simple cycles. So these are very simple uh, algorithms, but uh, the power in using those algorithms lies in actually um, running the algorithms and using the, the outcome of these algorithms, the results of these algorithms as an input to the automatic layout algorithms. This can help you as a developer to uh, highlight certain features in your structure and help the end user to see more quickly or find more quickly um, uh, areas of interest in the graph. But as I said, um, it's, it's difficult to understand what these values mean. Um, but there's, there's one important um, use case where, where you can use the uh, automatic uh, centrality algorithms to actually uh, work with larger graphs. So we, we came up with a way to that help you hide all the, the, the complex details, but instead run the algorithms and to come up with, an, with a clustering that will help your users to uh, more quickly understand larger graphs. So we, are, we came up with, an, with, with, an, with, a, with a strategy to actually um, run multiple uh, centrality and clustering algorithms, and then uh, take the graph to come up with a hierarchic clustering where users can drill down into the graph. So this is a graph that uh, originally contains uh, about a thousand nodes, and we we didn't provide any um, information to the algorithm uh, with res respect to how the graph should be clustered. Um, this this smart uh, algorithm will allow uh, your developers to to choose the number of items uh, a cluster may contain, and then we automatically come up with a clustering that you can then, for example, let your users explore interactively. This starts off with a, with a flat structure. So, so uh, all the, 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 um, the nesting, the, the hierarchic level um, that's, that's inside in this structure uh, has been inferred automatically through the clustering algorithms. So finally, uh, we found a way for those users who don't know how to uh, structure their graphs in a hierarchic way in order to, to provide drill down functionality like in this demo, um, because, because uh, there is no inherent hier hierarchy in the, in the data, for example, like, like in a social network. Uh, this data is actually um, from the Panama Papers, um, uh, anonymized, um, but, but this was also a flat data structure and running the automatic clustering algorithm, which, which runs quite fast actually, um, even on, on, on sizes like this, um, um, you get an automatic clustering um, with the, the preferred sizes of the cluster groups. So, so much for the automatic algorithms. Um, what's new in, in layout, automatic layout? Um, what we have in automatic layout is, is one major a theme that is a uh, new edge routing options concerning curved, Bezier curved edges and routing styles. So finally, we, we have the option to come up with uh, less technical visualizations for the hierarchic layout and for coming up with nicer visualizations with less bends. Uh, they, they, they do look less technically and may not be suitable for, for technical diagrams like BPMN or UML diagrams, but for state machines or or uh, other flow networks, this uh, type of visualization uh, really uh, helps to remove clutter and makes the, the diagrams easier 
uh, for the eye. Um, we also uh, added a new routing style for the circular layout and um, provided curved edges for the generic red edge routing algorithm. Let's take a look at, at a live demo. So this is the uh, hierarchic layout, as, as you know it, and standard Y files um, with all the, the, in this case, with, with orthogonal edge routing. And we can now choose to, to use curved routing instead. And then we get these kinds of layouts with, with this very smooth uh, edge, edge path uh, crossing the layers. Um, it's important to understand that uh, that's not a, not a global setting. You can actually configure this on a per item basis and have only some of the edges rendered in curved style or in orthogonal style or in uh, octilinear style, for example. And any mixture is possible. The next uh, feature uh, I told you about was the, the new edge routing styles in the circular layout. The circular layout is, is a very simple style, uh, and it had, but it's really useful for detecting communities in, in for example, in, in social networks. Uh, it had one problem in the past, that is, uh, for some of the edges, it was quite difficult to, to see where they were going to for, for the edges connecting nodes inside these circles. And now we came up with an, with an automatic algorithm to, to render these edges uh, using this, or, um, these circular uh, styles for, for the edges too. You can con configure them to, to always be rendered on the outside or just those that are necessary in order to, to uh, uh, reduce the number of um, crossings. But also you can, of course, as developer, select exactly which edges to put uh, place on the outside of, of those ring structures. For the um, edge router, for the automatic edge routing algorithms where uh, we, as, a, where, as users, can, can determine where to place the edges, we can, we, we also included the curved uh, layout style. So let's take a look at the curved automatic edge routing algorithm. As you can see, you get those nice curvy edges, uh, smooth connections between all the nodes. Now, the same as for the, for the hierarchic layout, this is a setting that you can configure on a per item basis. And there's lots and lots of, lots and lots of extra settings that you can configure in order to um, to change the outcome to your liking. Let's get back to, to the demos. So the next uh, part that uh, I will be showing you is uh, interaction. So this is about, um, you've seen the, the, the new Bezier curves that, we, uh, that we're using in some of the demos. And there is a way to, to actively edit those control points now in, in a comfortable man manner in a way that you may know it from, from vector drawing applications. Uh, but also there's, uh, some of you will be happy to hear that finally some, a feature that was previously only available in the demos has now been integrated in the core of Y files and that's the simple feature of um, uh, resizing nodes while keeping their aspect ratio or keeping the center at a certain point. Simple feature, but now it's part of the core. Um, we also came up with an alternative way of resizing a, a number of elements at the same time, not resizing each of them uh, individually, but um, resizing the group of elements and their locations. I'll get to that in the demo shortly. There's also an, a nice new feature, uh, which is great for, for letting users edit their diagrams, and that is about automatically compacting empty space in a diagram or making space in a diagram to place elements. So clearing the area to put to place new elements at a certain location. Something that I, I can't show you in the webinar right now is that we uh, improved the support for touchpad and magic mouse, two finger zooming and pan too. Um, this one is specifically for the HTML version, um, but it's also available for the touch enabled um, uh, version in WPF. Um, also, uh, an HTML only feature is uh, a built in support for ARIA screen readers so that you can uh, 
help um, the visually impaired um, um, uh, understand their graphs. Let's take a look at some of those features. So that's the, the Bezier edge style. That's the very smooth uh, edge style and, and selecting it will, will allow me to control uh, the, the curviness and the, manage the control points. And as you probably know from, from many uh, graphics, uh, vector graphics drawing tools, there's also a specific style uh, available that will help you to place labels on, on these Bezier curves. And you can, and they can be placed anywhere uh, with, with any ratio on, on the layout. And this is also where I can show you the, um, the center and aspect ratio uh, resizing options, which can be triggered using the Alt and Shift keys by default. But this, of course, can be disabled or uh, uh, modified to your liking in the code. Now, take let's take a look at the 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 options for resizing a selection of nodes. While well, previously um, uh, selecting multiple nodes, uh, resizing resulted in all of them uh, staying at the same location. There is now the option to either resize them and move them along like this, which is great for, for whole um, um, groups, for example, if you would like to change the, the visual size of a group. Or you can simply scale their locations, like um, trying to um, change um, the distance between a group of nodes. And again, this also works uh, with, with the modifiers for center uh, and aspect ratio resizing. This is uh, a demo that shows the, um, the functionality where we um, make space on, on the diagram in order to, to allow the user to place elements. So imagine this is a diagram that's already existing and I want to add new elements to the diagram, but I want to add them in a way that they do not overlap. And this demo shows how to uh, dynamically uh, make place in the diagram and rearrange the diagram so that I can drop the elements uh, without producing overlaps. This is dynamic, as you can see. I get, a, I get a preview of where I can where I can drop the items, and when I drop it, um, it will snap into place. Very nifty feature, really nice to play with, and I'm sure you're going to like it once it's available on in the online demos. This, of course, also works with uh, existing elements in the graph and doesn't is not restricted to dragging and dropping new items into the diagram. And this one is the opposite. Uh, it's a different use case. Um, for example, given a, a, an existing diagram, uh, once the user removes elements, it could happen that uh, a, bl a, a, a blank space is left in the diagram. In this demo, we automatically detect the, uh, the, the blank space and compact the diagram without calculating a new layout. So this actually works uh, with user-created layouts and with automatic layouts. So uh, suppose the user is deleting those two elements. Um, the diagram automatically gets compacted in a way um, that uh, there's no white space left in, in the end. This works with, with all kinds of layouts and all different, um, with, and also with user-generated layouts, of course. Removing elements automatically compresses the diagram without creating a completing new diagram. So having, having user-created a layout does not uh, prevent me from running the compaction process. Very nice feature. So on to the next topic, and that's visualization. Um, so this is also all about the visual aspects of, of the graph. We've already seen the Bezier edge style that we included in the library. That's actually a library feature. It's not a demo style. Uh, for the HTML version specifically, we also added a label style that will allow you to add markup to your uh, label text, meaning that you can give the user the ability to, to use rich text editors to actually author the contents of labels to create complex labels, but also for the developer to 
easily uh, create new um, labels without having to revert to uh, different label instances for, for different font styles, font styles, uh, colors, and so on. As always, there uh, have always been some performance improvements, and, but the most interesting feature uh, that we added in, in this release is the ability to, to edit the graphs in an isometric view. And uh, this is not restricted to a specific isometric projection transform, but any isometric projection transform um, that you can imagine and that, that you can put into a matrix uh, can be used to, to, um, for transforming the graph and letting the user edit it. Let's see how that works. So this is the uh, rich text label editing demo, uh, which is an HTML feature only currently. Other, other platforms have similar functionality, but in HTML, we have the, the markup. In this case, uh, we, we, we we're using some, some uh, existing rich text editor where the user can change colors, bold fonts, and so on. And this one gets rendered into the label. And of course, the label um, um, also allows for, for uh, word wrapping and text wrapping and, and so on. So this is just a single label. Uh, with rich text edited um, editor support and um, a very cool feature. Not all of HTML is supported. It's a subset of HTML that's supported. But for those who were missing uh, the feature to render HTML in the, in the labels, uh, this is a huge step forward, actually. And it's still um, uh, SCG, meaning that uh, if this is going to be exported or printed, you get exactly that um, uh, the, the visualization uh, in in the output on, on paper or in, in in a PDF file or in an exported SCG, exactly as as it's uh, rendered on the screen. And it works on every platform. It is not something that is Chromium only. And uh, now to the isometric editing. Uh, this is a graph. Um, that you may know, and it's editable um, just just the way that you know it. So, so we have all the nifty features like selection and orthogonal edge editing and stuff like that. And but imagine uh, how your users would like to see it uh, in an isometric view like this. This would allow you to add additional information to the graph because you get an get another dimension visually where you can encode information into the graph. And editing works just the same uh, in, the, in the isometric view. That is all the, the nifty features um, that we have, like snapping, orthogonal edge editing. Uh, they work in the, in the um, or creating new elements. They work just the same as in, as in the 2D view. And I can always just switch back uh, to the 2D view if I want to. And actually, it's not limited to, to this uh, specific uh, projection, but I can actually let the user rotate the view in a way that they like it. Very nice feature. So, um, so much for uh, the, the live demo in the visualization part. And now we're going to get a bit more into coding and more into uh, technical details. And let's take a look what's new uh, with respect to getting the data into Y files. Um, if you're creating a new application or you, you're adding a new data source to your existing application and you want to load that data as a graph into your into your app, there's now a new, more flexible option that will help you achieve this quickly. It's called Graph Builder, a utility class that can take multiple sources of nodes and edges and convert them into Wi Fi into a Wi Files graph. For each source of elements, you uh, meaning for each number of nodes, groups, edges, and labels, um, you can determine what default styling to use, uh, how to use the data binding for them, 
and and then get the data into YFAS with very little, very few lines of code easily. Let's take a look at how this works. So um, this is the this is some source code. In this case, it's it's the TypeScript uh, version, but the JavaScript version uh, looks just the same. So um, there's really just uh, just some metadata at the top here um, um, that defines the the external fictitious in in this case um, um, uh, data sources. So so we have some we have some node type and maybe a more complex node type and group nodes. And we get the data from some data source, for example, from a, from a JSON source. In this case, it's just hard coded just for, for the purpose of showing how it works. So we, we, we basically get a JSON object um, uh, where, where we get several nodes and several groups. So far, nothing special. And, and, and that's the same as you may know it from, from, from the current WiFi's release. Um, the new graph builder that we added Edit in this release now allows you to add multiple node sources. So for I can I can add both the nodes as well as the um, the group nodes, and I could also add a third uh, a group uh, a number of elements to in order to populate my graph. Um, the good thing is that each of these these sources. Um, can be created and configured to use different styles. For example, I'm for all the nodes, I'm telling it to use the shape node style, but but then I'm telling it to specifically to bind the fill property to the color property in the data. And with the perfect TypeScript bindings that we have in in this uh, release uh, with with the graph builder, you get code completion down to the level of your own data and like this. Um, so that's very helpful for quickly creating your graph. Um, but with the previous release, you could always have just one label for each node using that technique. Uh, you can now even create any number of labels uh, based on the data in your in your data in your in the in the existing um, data set that you have. So if there's an array, for example, or any collection of elements, in your in your data, you can tell it to create additional labels for each and every uh, item in the collection uh, associated with with the with the data in 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 your data set in, in adjacent data. But also, again, of course, you can do things like configure the style uh, or the font property um, for the different labels depending on the the data that you have in your data source. No need to subclass or, or uh, configure uh, complex uh, event listeners. You can declaratively uh, configure your graph that way. Now let's see that in action. There is uh, there is a new demo in in the in the package which allows you to see um, um, that you can. The, the multiple sources and edit the source of data that you have. So, for example, if there's one data source over here and there's another data source over there, um, um, and there's also a um, template over here, let's see how that um, modifies the existing graph. So, there's a new nodes I just added. And I, I didn't connect them in, in the edge source. I can also have multiple edge sources. But as you can see, I get different styles different for the nodes and for the for the edges too. And for the edges, there's there's a binding to the data in the stroke, for example, but any any binding is possible. So that's really, really helpful for getting your data into Y files. Okay, so much for the live demo. And the last feature for today, or the last topic today, is about increased developer productivity. So what's, this one is specifically for Y files for HTML, for the JavaScript and TypeScript version of Y files. And let's see what's in there 
um, to increase your productivity when working with wide files. Um, the biggest and new feature is actually a small feature, but really, really helpful. And this means that the automatic type checking, run, the runtime type checking that we have built in into Y files um, is now integrated into the NPM modules. That is, this means that if you are using a JavaScript tool chain like Webpack um, or, uh, or similar tool chains, the ones that come with Angular and React, uh, um, all those that are using the um, the different um, different deployment rules for production and development will automatically benefit from uh, that feature, meaning that you can uh, run your uh, Y files HTML application in development mode in produ production mode without having to in manually include scripts or modify the build file. This is all uh, built right into the M NPM version of Y files for HTML. We also dramatically improved the TypeScript definition file again, uh, adding more features uh, um, to it that were previously only available to the JavaScript users. Well, basically, they were available for the TypeScript users too, but the TypeScript definition file didn't support these features because of limitations in TypeScript. And for, for those TypeScript lovers out there, we added a lot more TypeScript demos, meaning that the existing demos are now available um, it, both in TypeScript and in JavaScript form. For the major uh, tool kits like Angular, React, and Vue, uh, we added new starter kits that will help you to quickly uh, create new apps using one of these tool kits and powered by Y files. And last but not least, um, there's uh, we dramatically uh, improved the way um, the experience that developers have when debugging in the browser console. Let's see how that works. Oops, over here. So that's the uh, that's just a simple getting started tutorial step. And I opened the the developer console, and as you can see, I get this message over here telling me that Wi-Fi is actually running in development mode, meaning that uh, I have things like y files debug uh, in, in my command uh, line available. And also meaning that if I um, like um, do create, uh, make an API call with, with mismatching parameters, I get um, clear uh, type info errors automatically. There's an argument error. I shouldn't have called it with with a boolean as a first argument, but rather use the rectangle. And this is um, this now comes uh, included directly for all those working with Webpack and and similar build tools at runtime. Um, so there's uh, there's no more fiddling with including the Y files and TypeScript um, at type info JS file into the page. Um, but now to the uh, formatting options. Let's see how that looks. Um, if you looked at the output of um, the object output of Wi-Files before on, on the console, uh, you probably seen a lots, lots and lots of internal data too. We now clean clean that up so that you can uh, uh, easily browse through through the structure of the the graph, seeing only the properties that are really relevant to you. Those that are accessible. For example, I can browse the list of all nodes, directly see their layout, uh, see the ports, the ports, see the properties of the ports, the style they have, and so on. If I need to access access the the, the raw data, and there's always a point where I can get to see all the the, the gory details inside, which are probably not helpful for you. So so we we created this this visual as uh, this um, these custom formatters that can be enabled uh, in the settings of the, your development tools in chromium based browsers and uh, to really help you with your uh, development experience so that's it we are at the end of what's new in y files um, i hope um, i I hope that uh, you liked it, and um, let's see 
whether there's some questions you had. Um, yes, there's a few. So there is one question. Um, can you elaborate more about area screen reader support? Um, yeah, the point is the, the library um, provides a pre-configured area live region, uh, which which can be used to trigger screen readers. So um, uh, I think we, we do have a demo, um, but I don't have the screen reader enabled. But um, um, the idea is to um, that that we provide a way um, to set a text for the developer um, that will automatically be read by screen readers. Uh, that text isn't visible on the screen, and it's it's your duty as a developer to come up with a with a uh, with a description of the graph because there's really no 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 correct way to describe a graph generically. It doesn't make sense to tell the user there's 15 nodes and 12 edges and node number one is connected to node number three. Um, but uh, we we make it easy for the developer to um, to trigger the screen descriptions, to trigger the, the output of uh, screen reader audio. Um, let, let's see whether there's something to see in the in the demo. Um, it's probably not that interesting, but um, oh yeah, yeah. So that's accessibility. So, um, <laughs> if if uh, when the user um, um, clicks those elements, in this case, the application automatically reads the labels of the nodes, uh, so that you can't hear that at the moment. Um, but what happens uh, in the background is that there's an invisible element inserted uh, in the in the component that is detected by screen readers, like like draw screen readers, the NVDA screen reader, or the Windows built-in uh, narrator. Uh, or the same one for for Mac OS, and and uh, they will allow you to to specify the text um, that is read out, uh, and you can you as a developer you can you can listen to the regular events like changes in selection or or navigation, and can tell Wi files uh, what what um, textual representation uh, it should uh, should offer to the screen readers. Um, so that's how it works. Um, let's see. Is there another? Yeah, there's more questions. Um, do we have plans to support Kotlin declarations? Uh, <laughs> yeah, we do have plans, um, but it's uh, not yet uh, implemented. There is there is actually um, one of our users. Um, is, uh, has created a, a very, very good repository on GitHub. Um, if, so if you use Google for Wi files and Kotlin and GitHub, you will probably find the project. And um, we, it, it will help you, uh, it will allow you to um, work with Kotlin uh, in the web state, um, JetBrains IDEs to, to create Wi files for HTML code. It is on our list to. To um, basically uh, take the great ideas from that project and and include the, the Kotlin declarations right inside of Y files, but this hasn't been done yet. It's if we're lucky, we're going to make it in 2020, but um, I I cannot make any promises yet. So, but but um, your your questions show us that there's interest in this technology. So so thank you for that question. Another question is: Is the isometric view feature also available for Java Swing? Yeah, it's it's available for all uh, platforms, so you can have it on on Java and .NET and uh, Windows Forms and WPF. Um, there's a difference uh, with respect to uh, how overlapping elements are rendered. So because um, in 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 the web version, um, we're using WebGL. And, and Canvas and SCG at the same time, but we're using WebGL specifically in the demo to, to make use of this Z buffer to, to get intersecting shapes, to get properly intersecting 
uh, shapes. Um, um, it, but it's not not uh, uh, a must to have this enabled. It just looks better with this feature. So so you, you can also get this on platforms where there's no uh, 3D Z buffer support. Um, um, so this this is, will, will also be available in Java Swing. Next question: Can we use the busy edge routing style with other layouts too? Yes, uh, you can. It basically it's it's also available as a as a layout stage and can be uh, concatenated uh, as as a post processing step um, as as a net routing step to um, uh, to to other layouts. So that it will. Uh, use the 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 uh, the output of the the core layout algorithm, the existing one, and then uh, smoothen the paths accordingly using BZA edges. So this is the the case for for those algor for those layout algorithms that don't in intrinsically support the BZA edge routing style. The hierarchic one um, doesn't use that stage; it's it's built into the hierarchic layout. Um, and when will it be released? Yeah, uh, well, when it's done, uh, I told you about some of the dates. Um, you, you've seen the roadmap. Uh, these are estimates, and we are positive that we can stick to them. So please stay tuned and, well, follow us on Twitter and see, uh, wait for the news. Um, as I said, uh, the HTML version, the JavaScript version, um, we are going to release the demos probably in maybe, maybe next week already. And uh, the release will be following in in the, the weeks thereafter, maybe end of May, beginning of June. It's done when it's done. Um, and one last question. No, two more questions. Um, do the algorithms use the GPO, uh, the GPU? Sorry, uh, no, they don't. Um, we found that this is not really necessary, and and in parts, I think it would not even improve the performance. Oh, we're quite sure that it wouldn't. Um, the algorithms that we implemented have been tuned a lot and heavily quite uh, already, and for the size of the graphs that we we expect them, we expect it to be working really well. And uh, the size that we do expect to be working on, after all, the graphs are all kept in memory. They, they really run quick enough. You've seen that they all updated live and they, they ran right in, in the browser. They can be made to run in a, in a separate thread or in a web worker though, but um, we're, we're uh, quite positive about the current implementation of the performance. And the last question, um, can I specify which relationships to consider for the new clustering algorithms? Uh, ah, okay. Yeah, that's actually that's actually a, a also a new feature that uh, I didn't list in in, in my my list. Um, that um, with the coming release, you you can perform all the algorithms algorithms that we provide out of the box um, automatically on on, on uh, user specified subgraphs. So so you you can like um, let's let's see, you can do things like um, Take one of these, um, one of the, the 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 algorithms, and there's an option now. Mm, let's see. Um, there's an option to um, to specify the subgraph elements. So I can specify the collection of nodes, uh, which which define a subset of the graph for the algorithm to work on, and also for the edges. And um, this would look like this: that um, when I instantiate the, the the algorithm, I can specify an option for the, the subgraph, tell it to include certain elements, for example, in this case, um, all elliptically shaped nodes, and but ignore the very first node in, in the graph, for example. And the same also works for edges. So, so I can have like subgraph nodes and edges, and then Specify well, for example, the well certain edges and, and filter them uh, using using a predicate and say where, where for example where where the label size is well when there's no label for example smaller than one and that would uh, 
calculate the shortest path on all the edges except for the ones um, that, uh, no, in this case, only on the ones that have no labels. Yeah, but this this also works for for like the the uh, main modularity page rank and all the others too. Um, yeah, I think that's a wrap. Thank you very much for for listening and for your questions, of course. And now you know what's new in Y files in this year. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Um, be sure to check back soon uh, to your uh, to our evaluation center on myyworks.com so that you can evaluate and download the new Wi-Fi versions and play with these features yourself. Thank you for listening. Stay safe. Bye-bye.